Hi guys, and welcome back to these revision videos for National 5 Explanations and Formula. In this video, we are going to be looking at significant figures and scientific notation. Now, as before, I suggest that you pause the video before I go through the solutions so that you can try them on your own. So we'll start off with significant figures. Now remember, significant figures are digits of a number that give us an idea about the quantity or the accuracy of the number. So if we asked how many significant figures that a number actually has, all we need to do is start counting at the first non-zero digit of the number. So if we look at the first example, we have 4,209. It has four digits, and the first digit is a four. That's your first non-zero one. So that means we need to count each of these. So before the two, the zero, and nine, that tells us it has four significant figures. For the second one, 0 0.224, for well, the first digit here is a zero. So we're going to leave that one out and leave and start counting from the two. So count the three digits so it has three significant figures. The next one, 1.0007. Even though those, those three zeros appear in the middle, each and every one of them is significant because it's then followed by a seven. And that seven gives us an idea of the accuracy of the number. So starting counting at the 1 here, we can see that there are 5 significant figures in this number. Similarly for the last one, we've got 0 0.0030. So we'll start counting at the 3, because that's the first non-zero digit. But then it's immediately followed by another 0. And that 0 in the end does give us an idea about the accuracy of the number. So therefore it's 2 significant figures here. If we're asked to round to a given number of significant figures, again, all we need to do is to start counting at the first non-zero digit. Okay, so we'll take these numbers again. So 4,209. This time we want to round it to one significant figure. So we're going to start counting at the first non-zero digit, which is the 4. But you'll see that this 4 is followed by a 2. 2 tells us that we need to round down. Okay, so that means that the 2, the 0 and the 9 all become zeros. So it's one significant figure. This is simply 4,000. Same goes for the next digit, the next number. We've got 0 0.224. We want this to be two significant figures. So again, we're going to start counting at the first non-zero digit, and that's the 2. Counting two digits from there, we get a number that is followed by a 4. And again, the 4 tells us we need to round down. So it's just going to drop off the end and leave us with 0 0.22. The last number we have is 1.0007. And this one we want to four significant figures. So we can start counting at the first non-zero digit, which is the 1. We're going to count for 4 and see here that it's actually followed by a 7. The 7 tells us we need to round upwards this time, so that means the 0 before it is going to go to a 1. So we have 1.001, .001. so four significant figures. Okay, so that brings us on to scientific notation now. So a number is in scientific notation if it takes on the form a times 10 to the power of n where this number of a has to be a number between 1 and 10. And the n is a power of 10. Okay, so it tells you how many times this has been multiplied by powers of 10. So 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. Okay, a large number will take on the form 4.23 times 10 to the power of 3, but it has a positive power, whereas a small number looks something like 2.1 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Okay, so the power tells you whether it is a large or a small number. Okay, so here are a couple of examples then. The first one, we have to write this number in standard form. Now remember, standard form and scientific notation mean exactly the same thing. So you want a number that is between 1 and 10 at the start, so all we need to do is to place a decimal point in between the first two non-zero digits. So we end up with the number 4.52. We then need to count and see how many times the decimal point has actually moved from the end of the number. So if we count the threes here, there's 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14 times. 
so that gives us the power of 10. So in standard form, this number is 4.52 times 10 to the power of 14. If we have a number in scientific notation and we want to write it out in full, we just need to simply multiply it by the powers of 10. So we need to move the decimal point seven times here. So we obviously have the 532 to start with. That's the decimal point moved twice, so we now need to insert another five zeros after this to fill in the empty spaces. Okay. You can check that you're correct just by placing your decimal point in and counting the number of times you've moved it back. And you can clearly see that that's seven times here. So there's your number in full. The same thing goes for small numbers. So this time we want to write 0 0.000000002809 in standard form. Okay, again, same principles apply. We need to place a decimal point in between the first two non-zero digits again. We're moving it in the opposite direction this time. So we have 2.809. Again, times 10. But we're talking about a small number, so we're going to have a negative power this time. Again, count how many times that this has moved. So we count the threes again. Three, six, nine. And then once more, it gives us a power of negative 10. So that's that number written in scientific notation or standard form. If we want to write a number out in full, we can do the same thing as we did before. But this time we need to put zeros in beforehand. So if we put our 2, 3, 5 in just now, because we know that's going to go at the end. From here we can see the decimal has moved one place because it could be placed in at the start of the 2. That tells us we need to now put another 3 zeros before this. So if I insert 3 zeros here, then my decimal point. But because these are all decimal numbers, I need to put a zero in for the whole numbers as well. Okay, again, you can check that these are correct by putting it back into scientific notation. So count how many times you've moved the decimal point, and you can clearly see that that's four times. So that's your number written out in full again. Okay, other things you may be asked to do with scientific notation is to actually do a calculation. So for example, there were 5.3 times 10 to the power of 11 downloads of the UK Top 40 songs last week. Each download costs £1.20. What we're looking to do here is to calculate the total paid for these downloads, giving your answer in scientific notation. But it's a fair enough, fairly straightforward calculation we have to do. We have £1.20, we have the number of downloads that were sold, so all we need to do is simply multiply them together. So we have 5.3 times 10 power of 11 multiplied by 1.20. Doing this calculation, this is the answer that we end up getting. Okay, and you can see that this is a fairly large number and it would be better to go into scientific notation. Okay, so as before, we want to place the decimal point between the first two non-zero digits and then count how many times it's been moved. Okay, so again, we can count in threes. So three, six, nine, ten, eleven. So that gives us a times ten to the power of eleven. Remember, we're talking about money here because it's a cost, so we need to insert the pound sign. And that's your final answer. Okay? So again, these are just the basic skills of the things that you need to know for the unit assessment. It's up to you now to go away and practice these and extend upon them for the extension test, prelim and exam.